What a, uh, no pressure, I gotta get it, yeah. <laughs> You know, when lacrosse came on his radar, uh, we did talk about it uh, early on, and so that immediately planted the idea in my mind of could we be Florida State Seminoles? And uh, for my wife Becca and I, that became an immediate yes. And so the process, I was down here uh, late June, early July, uh, really fell in love with Tallahassee at that moment. And uh, he called last week, I believe it was. It's been a little bit of a whirlwind, and um, you know, here we are uh, today. And so it, it did happen pretty quickly. Um, and you know, for us, there was never a hesitation or a moment of thought of, you know, do we want to do this? It was an immediate yes, um, not only to be here at Florida State, but also be back with Michael Moore. What is it about FSU and lacrosse that you think is going to be a perfect marriage? Oh, gosh. You know, like, obviously, I mean, the, the Florida State brand across the country and the world, uh, the number of alumni I've already spoken with, it is palpable, like I said. You know, and for us to be able to build a program here, it's no longer an introduction. You know, when there's a phone call in place and it's Florida State women's lacrosse head coach calling, people already know that they're getting a great degree and they are going to be a part of a, an excellent athletic department. So we're going to be down south, obviously. A lot of student athletes want to be down south. Uh, uh, like I just said, if I could build the, build programs in the Midwest where it snows, uh, I think you know building programs down here in beautiful Tallahassee uh, will be a slam dunk for a lot of young student athletes that want to be a part of not only the tradition here, but also be a part of you know what, what's going on in Tallahassee. What's like the best approach when you're talking to a high school student who has aspiration of playing college lacrosse, and what what is it like you? will be like yourselves, but how you sell them to come to that Oh, Florida State sells itself. You know, it really truly does. And so for me, it's really just putting our vision and values on the table and making sure that they can meet those vision, those values. Uh, like I said, uh, we want student athletes of great integrity. Uh, I've always been a people first recruiter. And so we want to make sure there's a lot of great lacrosse players out there, right? Um, but we want to make sure we have the right people in place um, that are going to not only build this program the right way with integrity and respect, but also want to compete for championships right away. Now, a lot of people talk about championships, you know, but it's how we do that um, that's going to be a little bit different here. Um, we're not afraid to attack from day one. We'll challenge every single team in the ACC. And for us, it's really just about finding that right fit. And so, you know, to go back to your, your question, how do we build this? You know, when Florida State calls, people are going to answer and they're going to want to be a part of this. And it's, I think it's up to us to really figure out how do we get those right people in the door. How much, uh, you said uh, fans will quickly fall in love with this cross. How did you fall in love with it? And how do you think oh, the fans will? I appreciate this question very much. I was a high school lacrosse player. Uh, my high school history teacher, I, you know, like most coaches, uh, I was, you know, involved in athletics from a very early age. But for me in the Midwest, that was basketball, that was soccer. And so my high school history teacher put a stick in my hand and said, I think you'd be great at lacrosse. I remember bringing it home, my parents said, what is the sport? You know, being in Michigan, we were one of 32 high schools that had it at the time. And so I absolutely fell in love with the sport and continued just to find ways to stay involved with the sport uh, was something that was always important to me. And like I said, it brought me my very best friends. You know, the people that were at my wedding, the people that I've been in weddings of, you know, watching my former student athletes now get married, have babies, land their dream jobs I've been a part of that and so you know for me Mr. Bill Praler was that person and without him I think it, obviously my whole life would have changed uh, and not been the on the trajectory it is. How much of your past experiences of building programs kind of taught you lessons that you hope to apply here as you build a facility assemble staff so on and so forth? Yeah I think what I've learned the most is to be unapologetic about my standards and um, for me that means having incredible integrity um, doing it with respect, doing it with a ton of passion, not being able to put in that extra rep like I mentioned, um, you know, and, and looking for student athletes and staff members that align with that. And that's asking a lot. And that's what's going to separate us and make us a special program here is that it does, it's not for everybody. Um, we're going to ask for more and we're going to demand a, a, a standard of excellence that some people say they want, um, but are they really willing to commit and put the work in? You know, I've seen so many student athletes come in and come in as freshmen and they're like, yeah, we're good at lacrosse and we love this sport and we want to work. And then you see the work that has to go in. You see quickly who's willing to buy in and who maybe just, you know, probably doesn't have it within them. And so for me, it's been unapologetic um, with, my, with the standards and asking people to get on board with what we're, what we're going to do here. Thank you very much. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Very nice.